Hi, this is Miss Carol again. I'm here to share with you a lesson from God's Holy Word, the Bible, designed for a child's heart and mind. And if we were at church, this is what we would be doing in children's church time today. We've been going through um, the book of Acts, it's called, and we're calling this the Church on Mission. Our main question is, how do people hear about Jesus? And the answer is, God uses Christians to tell others about Jesus so they may repent and be saved. And our Bible verse is, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We started the book of Acts way back with something called um, Pentecost. Well, even before that, when Jesus told this to his disciples before he went back up to heaven, he gave them this command that they would tell others about him. And then Jesus went back to heaven, sent the Holy Spirit with power, with the sound of the rushing violent wind and the tongues of fire, so that the people were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to tell others about Jesus. And we're getting close to the end of the book of Acts now, but let's review a little bit. Paul has shared the gospel everywhere God led him to share. He had gone to cities that were pretty much the ends of the earth as it was known at that time. He has traveled in Galatia. He has gone to over here to Europe, to Philippi, to Thessalonica, Berea, Athens, Corinth, Ephesus. And you know what? The command to go to the ends of the earth wasn't given just to Paul, though. And it wasn't given to the coronavirus either, even though it seems to have gone everywhere on earth. But it was given to Christians, to all of us who believe and love Jesus. It is our job to make sure that the gospel spreads everywhere and be his witnesses, just like the verse said. Well, let's remember um, what the gospel is. It starts with creator God who is full of love and grace and yet says sin must be punished. And when sin entered the world, because one man sinned, God began his plan of redemption. Redemption. Forgiveness. How God's going to rid the people and the world from sin. You see, we are full of sin. We are born that way. We don't have to be taught how to sin. It comes natural. Disobeying, lying, selfishness, not caring about others, just to name a few. Sin is whatever God calls wrong. God saves us from the punishment of sin when Jesus died on the cross to take away the punishment from sin. God saves us not only from the punishment for sin, but also the power of sin because the Holy Spirit love lives inside of believers and the Holy Spirit helps us to turn our back, turn away from sin and not give into it. And then God also saves us from the presence of sin when we get to be in heaven with him for, forever someday, there won't be any sin there. So we are saved from the power of, from, excuse me, from the punishment for sin by the cross. We are saved from the power of sin by the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And we are saved from the very presence of sin when we get to eternity. Well, you might know the gospel better as the gospel fuzzies. So let's just do that. I got my glove here, if I can get it on right. And I'll start the music. We're the Gospel Fuzzies, we're the Gospel Fuzzies, we're the Gospel Fuzzies with good news for you and me. Gold tells us of God's love, gold tells us of God's love, gold tells us of God's love, he loves you and me. Dark means I have sinned, dark means I have sinned, dark means I have sinned, I can't hide from him. Red means 
means Jesus died. Bread means Jesus died. Bread means Jesus died, but he rose again. Clean means I'm forgiven. Clean means I'm forgiven. Clean means I'm forgiven when I trust in him. Green means I am growing. Green means I am growing. Green means I am growing more and more like him. Good. So, sharing the gospel, being witnesses of the truth. Some do that by going. Some do that by sending others to go, by praying and giving. Just like our church, Mary and Grace, has sent Pastor John and Sherry Jones to France by praying for them, by supporting them with money and other gifts. And the church helps lots of other missionaries also. Well, let's play a game. Take down the map and the verse and the main truth here. We're going to talk about whether or not it is a real country with real people who need to hear about Jesus. So you can do thumbs up or thumbs down whether or not you think it's a real country. Okay, let's start with Latvia. Is that a real country? Yeah, it is. It's in Europe. How about... Luxembourg. Funny sounding, but yes, that is also a real country. How about Zamboni? Nah, that's not a real country. Do you know what a Zamboni is? You can find out later. Macedonia. We heard about that in our Bible stories about Paul. And yes, that is a real country. How about Alpland? No, there are a bunch of countries that have mountains called the Alps, but Alpland is not a country. Kalahari. No, we go there to swim, but it's not a real country. Well, let's do a couple more. Cambodia, excuse me, Cambodia, that is a real country. Matter of fact, that is where our sponsored child, Ra Chin, is. And hullabaloo. Nah, that's not a real country. Uh, a couple more. Zaire is a real country in Africa. Sushi. Nah, that's not a real country. Hungary. Of course, that is a real country. Some of the real countries have funny sounding names. But in those real countries, there are real people who need to know about Jesus. Well, let's um, go on with the book of Acts here. And, sorry about that. Um, Paul has made his three big missionary trips called Missionary Journeys. And he's traveled to those places on our map. And he has um, told many, many people about Jesus. And there have been churches started in some of those cities. And <clears throat> some of those churches Paul wrote letters to. And we can read them, the letters that Paul wrote in our Bibles. Like Ephesians, written to the church in Ephesus. Galatia, Galatians, written to the churches in the region of Galatia. He wrote 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, written to the church in Thessalonica. He wrote 1st and 2nd Corinthians to the church in Corinth. He wrote Philippians to the church in Philippi. And uh, Paul wrote to these churches to encourage them to keep on telling the true things about Jesus. Okay. He wanted people to tell all about sin, forgiveness, and Jesus. Okay, so Paul revisited some of these churches to make sure they were continuing in the truth. And now we've come to the end of Paul's third missionary journey. And we're at chapter 21 in the book of Acts. And it says, on to Jerusalem. 
And you know, some of Paul's friends urged him not to go on to Jerusalem. As a matter of fact, verse 10 tells us that there was a prophet named Agabus who came to Paul and Paul's friends that he was staying with. And he took Paul's belt and he tied his own hands and feet with it and said, the Holy Spirit says, in this way, the Jewish leaders will bind the owner of this belt and hand him over to the Gentiles, hand him over to the Romans, the Romans who were in charge in Jerusalem. But Paul said, I'm not afraid. The Lord's will be done. You see, Paul trusted God's presence with him, and Paul trusted God's promise that God had work for Paul to do. And they went on to Jerusalem. And when they got there, the people in the church greeted him, and he got to tell them all about what was going on in those other parts of the world, how many Gentiles had believed in Jesus, and the, the church people there in Jerusalem, the believers in Jesus, received that news with gladness. But there were some Jews from Asia, not even from Jerusalem, but from Asia, who were in Jerusalem, and they started to um, stir up the crowd against Paul. And they, these Jews from Asia and the crowd started yelling about how Paul was teaching against everything they believed. They thought Paul was even teaching against the law of Moses. But of course that wasn't true. Paul would never teach against the Ten Commandments. All Paul was saying was that we can't keep the Ten Commandments. And even if we could keep the Ten Commandments, it wouldn't save us for heaven. We need Jesus. But the Jews were upset and continued to accuse Paul. And it says they, the whole city was aroused and people came running from all directions and they grabbed Paul and they dragged him away from the temple. And they were even trying to kill him. And the commander of the Roman soldiers found out and he sent some soldiers to find out what was happening. And they had to arrest Paul to keep him safe from the angry crowd and to keep the crowd from beating him. So they, the commander tried to get at the truth of who this man was and what he had done. But the crowd just kept shouting and the commander could not find out what the problem was. So they, the soldiers were going to take Paul away to their barracks where they, the soldiers lived. But Paul said to the commander, before, before I leave, before I go with you, let me speak to the crowd. Paul stood on the steps, probably of the temple, and said, I am a Jew in Cilia, a citizen of no ordinary city. Please let me speak to the people. Actually, he might have said this to the commander, not to the crowd. I am a Jew from Tarsus in Cilia, a, Cilia, a citizen of no ordinary city. Please let me speak to the crowd. And so after receiving the commander's permission, Paul stood on the steps of the temple and motioned to the crowd, and they became silent. Well, we're going to find out what happens next, next time we get together. Have a good week. I'm praying that you and your family are safe, and I'm going to do that in just a moment. Pray. And it is good to open God's word together, even when we're not together. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for your gospel, the plan of salvation, where you have made a way for us to have our sins forgiven. Thank you for the true stories from the book of Acts where we have learned how the gospel spread with power and how this man named Paul served you and believed in you and trusted you so um, faithfully, even when his life was in danger sometimes. Help us to trust and obey you also in Jesus' name. 
all the children shouted, Amen. See you later.